Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we should notice that both the numerator and the denominator contain four terms. If we're trying to factor and we see four terms, we probably want to try the grouping technique. So let's group the first two terms and the last two terms together in the numerator and do the same for the denominator. Now, what can we factor out that's common in each of those four groups? Well, in the numerator, we can see here that we can factor out an x. That leaves us with x to the fourth minus four. Here, it looks like, well, there's nothing to factor out, so we'll just go plus one times x to the fourth minus four, because then we notice that the two terms that are remaining contain a common factor of x to the fourth minus four. In the denominator, here we can factor out, well, notice that this looks the same like this, but it's in reverse, so we factor out a negative 1, we can make it look exactly the same. So negative 1 times a negative 4 plus x to the 4th, and now of course we can turn those terms around. And then over here, notice we can factor out a minus x squared. If we do that, let's see what we get. That leaves us with a minus 4, and let's see, uh, a minus x squared, that leaves us with a 4. We don't want that we're going to factor out a positive x squared. Because what I want is, if I do that, I want a negative 4 and a positive x to the fourth. There we go. And now you can see that these look exactly the same as well, except in reverse order with what we have in the numerator. So at first I thought I should factor out a negative x squared, but that didn't work because I want these two terms or these two factors to look exactly the same. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x to the fourth minus 4 out of the numerator. So this becomes x to the fourth minus 4. What I have left is an x minus 1, or x plus 1. In the denominator, I'm going to reverse the order and factor out an x to the fourth minus 4. Then I'm left with a negative 1 and a plus x squared. So I can write this as x squared minus 1. So I just also reverse the order of these two. So now I can see that these cancel out, and I'm left with an x plus 1, and in the denominator, an x squared minus 1. But then we should realize that the denominator is a difference of squares, which means we can factor that as, in the numerator we still have an x plus 1, but in the denominator, I end up with an x plus 1 times an x minus 1. And then I realize I can reduce these two, and I'm left with a net 1 over x minus 1 as my final answer of this big expression that I started with. And notice, by recognizing these things, by recognizing the proper technique, we can fairly simply uh, reduce, <laughs> reduce that to its final form, which is quite simplistic, and that is how it's done.